Honours Father Chow, Mr. Tam, Honourable Guests, Parents, Teachers and Fellow Wire Knights, a good and memorable evening to you all. Extending an invitation to an old boy to be the guest speaker on speech day is indeed a high honour. I feel I'm not worthy because it implies that you approve of me for what I am. Those were the words of my father, Paul Choi Gacheng, in 1966. He was a decorated war hero and the first Chinese to become AO, administrative officer, in the government of Hong Kong under British rule. Here I stand, 43 years later, on the same stage, finding it an impossible task to justify my presence with worthiness, be it social or academic. Thus, I will offer you in a moment words of a topic I know best, the passion and heart of a die-hard wire knight. In Cantonese, Dabba Se Dik Wire Knight. It takes the school courage and innovation to ask an old boy who did not excel in school to address her students on speech day. Let it be known that this is not to be taken as a sign that Wayan is compromising on her pursuit of academic excellence. This has to be said because we are not harvesting that many straight A's in the public exams this year and our critics are still counting the number of A's we are not getting and they are ignoring our higher aim to provide all-round education. On behalf of my wife and myself, I would like to express our sincere thanks to the school for having us as guests on this very special speech day when Wa Yan is celebrating her 90th anniversary. I believe that makes me the first third generation speaker from the same family. I'm sure my father and especially my grandfather would appreciate your remembering Wayan's past, a good 90 years after the school was founded. My congratulations go to all the deserving winners of certificates and prizes here today. To those of you who have done well, you have worked hard and opened up your first door to success in life. There will be many other doors to open after you leave Wayan. But your proven success here today leaves no room for our doubting your ability to open them all. My compliments go to your parents and your teachers who have given you the keys with which to open these doors to your bright and colorful future. But don't forget, a word of thanks direct from you to your parents and teachers is worth 10 times more than what I can say. Now, to those who have not performed up to expectation, do not be discouraged by the closing of one door. For if you raise your heads and look up, there are windows awaiting your exploration and opening. Beyond these windows, the vista is just as bright and colorful. However, you may have to work harder, exercising your intellectual insight and perhaps your creativity to build a step ladder that will help you to reach these windows. The ever-increasing pace at which the world is changing will only create more niches to harbor opportunities for persistent contenders with clear goals of their own. Working harder to follow your passion and heart is the way forward for you. Having worked hard for a, for a number of years as a webmaster for various non-profit organizations, I get to feel the pulse of these communities pretty well. Among them, the Wayan Old Boys come through as the most volatile community in terms of emotionality. The 10 years I spent maintaining their website on a daily basis have taught me that most Wayan Old Boys tend to sway back and forth like a pendulum between loving and hating to be Wayan old boys. 
Since you are all becoming old boys soon, allow me to draw a bit more on old boys. Yes, as old boys, you may find yourselves swaying between loving and hating to be wired and nice at different times. Fluctuating emotions of old boys can be measured by a new measuring system that I have just invented. I call it the old boys pH level scale. pH in this case stands for passion and heart. The passion and heart you have for your alma mater. A pH level of say eight, which is I'm told equivalent to that of baking soda, is when Wayan is doing well and you feel like baking a cake to celebrate. A pH level of three equivalent to that of vinegar, is when you feel things are getting sluggish in school and you find yourselves feeling sour and talking bitter about it. And it is at times when you disagree with how the school is run and find yourselves emotionally charged up, screaming for the heads of those you think are responsible, that your pH level drops to zero, <laughs> equivalent to that of battery exit which is erosive. Indeed, I have seen old boys, as well as current students, making waves of emotional comments that ripple through the internet. A recent example is on lunch policy for the higher forms. But believe me, there were much bigger ones prior to that. So, am I suggesting that you should remain restrained and complacent? The answer is, of course, no, because no matter how critical your comments may sound, they are founded on the passion and heart for your mother school. Thus, when the pendulum swings back again, those of you who scream the loudest often become the ones who do the most for Wayan at the end of the day. For example, in 2007, the Jesuit Education Board decided not to have YN join the DSS, Direct Subsidy Scheme, JICD. As a member of the DSS task force, I heard strongly worded threats from old boys who believed that DSS was the only way to go to enhance academic excellence. But soon after that, the same old boys were raising funds to support small class teaching program, the option adopted to enhance academic excellence. To the die-hard wire nights, the pendulum always swings back, submitting to a pool of gravity, which in our case is Jesuit education, a blessing we inherited on the day when Wayans was handed over to the Society of Jesus 77 years ago. As the grandson of the founder, I have often been asked about the reason for handing over, for the handing over. The reason is written in Father Thomas Morrissey's book, Jesuits in Hong Kong and Beyond, which I had the pleasure of helping to publish last year. Mr. Choi, he wrote, had founded the college in 1919. After only three years, it was so efficiently run that it was admitted to the list of granting aid schools by the government. By 1929, it was the biggest school for Chinese students in Hong Kong consisting of 800 pupils and 30 teachers and was receiving the highest grant ever. Then Mr. Choi's partner invested the reserve fund of the school unsuccessfully. And this was followed by the World Economic Recession, all of which resulted in a 20% fall in student attendance and education grant in aid. At the same time, the salaries of the staff were increasing. In order to secure the future of the school and its teachers, Mr. Choi decided to hand the school over to the Jesuits. 